Mike cute. Hacker's video. Uh, well done. Uh, Bert, yes. uh, you know what the, my favorite day of the year is? Christmas? No. My favorite day of the year is when we go around and notify Silver Pigskin finalists that they are going to be on the podium for the Silver Pigskin Gala. Uh, if we have that video, go ahead, roll it. Uh, we pick. My we, birthday? We, we informed six young men back on Wednesday that they were going to be on the podium. Is there anything uh, you'd like to add to our selections? Well, that's one more than usual, isn't it? It is one more than usual. The reason why is normally we have five finalists and the six is the fan vote. We were, It got to be 2 o'clock in the morning. Everybody was... <laughs> that's uh, cool, right? Yeah, I didn't stay. Uh, I like uh, your publisher's clearing out. <laughs> yes, I felt like <laughs> Ring the man. doorbell. Uh, of the, you know the names by yeah. now. Uh, who, uh, who are you going to vote for? Oh, God. You know, we were talking about that earlier. This is probably the hardest year because there's so there's been some amazing performances, been some record breaking. I thought Noah at the beginning of the year, he gets hurt. County Springs came out of nowhere, dominated. It's really difficult this year. I don't really know who to vote for at this point. And, and you're looking at uh, Mr. Tyler Buckner from, there's Noah. Uh, you're looking at, before that, Tyler Buckner from Bishop School. Another one that came out of nowhere and threw for a million yards. And he could be the first junior since Reggie Bush did in 2001 to win the, he it would set him up to be the Archie Griffin of uh, the Prep Picks and Report because he could win it as a senior as well. It would, and you know what? We had an argument last year because I thought Noah should have won it as a junior, and you didn't let me. But yes. yeah, so it would be the same exactly. All right. Well, we will, we will talk more tonight on the uh, Prep Picks and Report, which comes your way at 11 o'clock. We will introduce that seventh name. You, the people, made that decision. Over 25,000 votes cast in a. Who are you voting for? I didn't even ask you. I'm sorry. Who are you voting for? Well, you know what? I'd rather not say because I have to. Uh, you know, right right now, if I had to vote, if yeah. I had to vote right now, I'd vote for the kid from Mount Miguel, uh, Jaheim Allen Pompey. Just yeah, because amazing numbers, amazing numbers and uh, just an amazing well, story. So that's the problem with PPR. If you take somebody like Keyshawn and put him in that system, how many yards does Keyshawn have? That's a very fair argument. It's, I mean, that's why, as I, I'm subject to change, and I hold, I reserve my right as the host of the show to change my mind uh, coming up before December fifth. All right, uh, let's uh, we'll we'll talk more right now. Let's go to Brandon Stone, who's live at Patrick Henry. Take it away, Brandon. Thank you very much. It is Patrick Henry versus Del Norte in the Jersey Mike City Game of the Week, but I have a really special guest. Monty Hazlett, we talked to you in August as you were going through your uh, cancer battle. Can you give us an update on how you're doing, what's going on in your life? So after um, the last scan, I'm officially cancer-free, and I'm just finishing my last cycle of uh, chemotherapy. got to be so refreshing yeah, to, to, to say that out loud. Yeah, it is. And I know your goal is to next year be back out on this field and playing in this playoff yes. game, not just watching it. Yeah, so I'm uh, hoping to get back into rehab and um, start training for next year after three weeks. Finish on the And one of the most powerful things right here is you, even though you've been going through chemo this entire time, this is the, what, 11th game yeah. that this team has played? How many games have you been in? I mean, it's all 11 games. <laughs> Got to be there to support my brothers because they supported me through this whole thing. That's what I want to hear. And we're obviously here, Casey, here to support you. Thank it's great you. to see you again. Enjoy your time out here. Enjoy your time with your brothers. Let's go up north to Madison, St. Clair. Brandon, well, we are out here at La Costa Canyon for the North County Game of the Week. And as you can see, over right behind me, we have the Granite Hill Eagles on the field for the first time ever. They're on the La Costa Canyon field. That is because they just moved up to Division I this year. They're playing all new teams, and they made it to the Division I playoffs, playing the Mavericks for the first time. Now, Granite Hills comes in as the 11th seed, La Costa Canyon as a 6th seed. It's an avocado league versus Grossmont Hills League. And, you know, I can see Granite Hills being pretty good at this game they're gonna you know they have a tough defensive line their t defense is really good uh their quarterback mccombs has been doing great he's new this season however you have lacosta canyon who you know has the best avocado league player from last year however ozzy nicholas is out due to injury so it's going to be a very interesting game we'll have all the highlights from the north county game of the week coming up on the prep picks and report so bo we're sending it out to you in the south bay well, thank you very much, Madison. We're here at Eastlake High School as the number eight Titans take on the number nine Oceanside Pirates in our South Bay Game of the Week. We caught up with head coach of Oceanside about his star running back, Kavika Tua. Fantastic young man. Uh, you know, he gets another chance to hopefully, uh, you know, do what he does best. And, uh, you know, but we're going to count on him to make a difference tonight. And what was your message to your boys today? Hey, we got to finish. Uh, we ended our season on this field last year, and we, we don't want to repeat history. Is there anything you learned from that? Oh, no doubt. 365 days worth pent up, so we're hoping to get, you know, get after it tonight. 
And once again, that was head coach David Rodriguez of Oceanside. We don't want to give too much away as the number one seed coaches over here, Steel Canyon, checking out this game today. The winner of this game will play number one seed, Steel Canyon. We will now send it to the east to Allison Edmonds. Thank you so much, Bo. We are here at Grossmont where things are starting to fill in for their game against the San Marcos Knights. Now the Grossmont Foothillers are coming to this game as the number five seed against San Marcos, who are four and six on the season under new head coach Derek Stink, and they are the number 12 seed in this game. Now we have quarterback Jamie Odom, who is a Silver Pigskin fan vote finalist. Jalen Boehner from San Marcos. Lots of players to look out for on both these teams. And the winner of this game will go on to play the number four seed Madison Warhawks next week, which could be interesting considering last year Grossmont Madison played in the playoffs and Grossmont ended up coming out with a victory. They had a rematch earlier this season and it could happen again next week. We will see what happens here in this game tonight. But for right now, Paul, we will go ahead and send it back over to you. All right, Allison Edmonds, thank you very much. Just a quick reminder, it takes a village to put this show on the air. We will have highlights from 19 different games. That means 19 field producers are not only out there trying to find you the best highlights, they're trying to find you the best sidebar stories and putting them up on all our social media platforms under the title Hogcast. One of my favorite from a week ago. Yeah, we go out to the desert to cover these games, folks. The team of Matt Gilson and Chase Osborne were talking with Central's principal, Craig Lund about the 76th annual Bell game against Brawley. Take a listen. Craig Lyon, principal and alumni of Central Union, just give us a history of this rivalry. Well, I mean, this rivalry, actually, the game has been played for almost 97 years. Uh, and uh, the Bell game, this is the 76th annual Bell game. So in 1943, they bought this Bell, Victory Bell, and it's now become history. And, and this game is just, it's the biggest game in, in the Imperial Valley for, you know, I mean, like I said, 46 or 76 years and it's just exciting we have almost 4,000 over 4,000 people we sold out yesterday we'd love to add probably another 6,000 but uh, the fire department won't let us add people in here but that's what high school football is about that's what the prep picture report is all about and we're also out in the desert tonight not with one crew with two different crews as our teams travel to the desert a big thank you to matt gilson and chase osborne for making the trip last week they are now uh they, they, they've served their uh, country they do not have to go again this year hey bert we have a little time to finish our conversation we were talking about the silver pigskin finalist and we were talking about the difficulty of an open division kid like noah and a division three or four kid like Jaheim Allen Pompey and how you how do you possibly choose between those two caliber I mean if you put Noah with the Mount Miguel schedule he'd have 5,000 yards in a half a season yeah and if you put Keyshawn with Buffner he'd probably have 28,000 and not to say getting away from anybody but that becomes a problem schemes coaching your quarterback if you're a receiver um, the stability your offensive coordinator fitting in that system so I go down to, I think Keontae could kill it anywhere. I think Noah could kill it anywhere. So for me, it's probably between those two. All right, we should uh, mention that Torrey Pines is coming in behind us. I don't know if we can widen out to see it, but uh, the, the team is coming on, and uh, now the Rancho Bernardo band is uh, showing up. The stands are filling up. Suddenly, it feels like Friday night football game, It feels, feels it? like foot, uh, uh, Friday night football again. Uh, we're going to have a little playoff atmosphere. Would you like to make your final prediction? My final prediction is going to be Rancho Bernardo, only because, like we talked to with Coach Gladnick, they're so young this year. I, I just it, I think it's too much for me. All right, so folks, you heard that. Now you know to put your money on Tory Pine. <laughs> but, but bet the house and uh, uh, and and cash in a little bit. Uh, Bert, you'll be joining us on the first and fifteen. What will the story of the game be uh, tonight at ten forty-five? It's going to be the Chain Crew. I hear they have an amazing story about the Chain Crew Rancho Bernardo, and I want to explore that a little bit. All right, so about Bert, I'm not going to tell you who's going to win the game because I don't right, know. Bert Grossman will. Uh, We'll be uh, bring, bringing that, again, highlights from 19 playoff games. We'll also have the final score from the Kearney game as we'll uh, be uh, tracking that down for you as well. Uh, top seeds are resting. The, these, all these teams are now fighting to extend their season. It's going to be an interesting clash of styles as Torrey Pines and Rancho Bernardo. They haven't seen each other since, I don't know, in the regular season back in 2013, I think it was. So uh, we'll have all that for you. 1045, it's the first and 15. Highlights from this game exclusively with Burt's expert yeah. analysis. And now, and then at 11 p.m., it's the prep picks can report. We
we have to get ready for the national anthem, so we're going to send it back to our esteemed colleagues inside the studio.